welcome to epg patashala i am professor ravichandra rao i am at present working in center for knowledge analytics and ontological engineering in pes university in bangalore in this model i'll be talking in general growth of literature i'll be talking different growth models which may be used which are useful to explain growth of literature many of you might have heard price's work price in 1963 argued scientific literature grows exponentially and computed the growth rate of journal as a 5% over the past two centuries since then many have worked in this area and come out with a different model to explain the phenomenon of growth of literature it has been found that the growth rates of literature are influenced by many factors for example price said journals grow 5% over a period of 2 centuries now how far this statement may be correct in the last 2 centuries we have seen several wars there was a changes in the weather political culture in each in different countries changed quite a lot under these circumstances how we can say growth of literature is only 5% or less than 5% or more than 5% we really cannot generalize such a things growth has certain characteristics for example once in 50 years the number of universities labor force population etc double once in 20 years gnp Disco discoveries scientists college students say for per thousand etc double once in 15 years the number of scientific journals doubles once in 10 years the number of articles or a literature in a particular field doubles once in 2 years the number of websites doubles now these are the things which you have seen in the recent years in fact these were also been observed by price now generally growth of publications for that matter growth of any entities has in four different stages in the first stage the preliminary period of a growth in which the absolute increments are small although the rate of rate of increase is large in the second stage the period in which the number of publications in a field double at a regular intervals as a result of high rate of growth often referred to as exponential growth in the third stage we can say the period when the rate of growth declines but the annual increment still remain approximately constant and in the final stage the final period when both the rate of increment and the absolute increase declines and eventually approach to a zero these are the important four stages in growth of a publication now you may see in the next slide the growth curve it is generally yes shape you can see the first stage that is a curve you can see in the second there is a straight line then the third it goes up exponentially the last stage suddenly there is a flat there is no growth there is a horizontal line you can see in the curve this curve represents the different i mean depicts the different four stages of growth now let me explain some observations made by different scientometricians for example price that is his conjecture was a very which well, was a very well known he estimated the number of scholarly periodical titles being published by the end of a 20th century would exceed 1 million i don't think it was a true the actual figure is not 1 million it is a far less than a million but he did make this statement based on his study the exponential growth model which he has explained next one michael mabe he observed that journal growth rates have been remarkably consistent over a time 
with average growth rates of 3.46 percent since 1800, whereas Price observed it as a 5 percent. He further observed, Michael Mabe further observed, during 1900 to 1940, the number of active journal titles grow at an actual rate of 3.23 percent, a doubling time of 22 years. During 45 and 76, the number of journals grow at an annual rate of 4.35 percent, representing a doubling time of 16 years. Since 1977, the number of journals grow at rate of 3.26. Now, Michael Mabe's paper, we can also see that he has explained why the growth rates, low growth rates after the mid 1970s. We have seen a oil crisis in the 1970s, the increasing public awareness of potential ecological disaster and the turning away from the nuclear technology in the 1950s. These are the important factors which influence the growth rate of publications. Next slides. Now, there are several models in statistics which are very useful to study the growth of literature. For example, one of the models is known as the exponential model which is very much used in the growth of in studying the growth of a literature. Exponential model is also known as log linear model. It is associated with the Thomas Robert Malthus. Thomas Robert Malthus, he said any species can potentially increase in number according to a geometric series. It represents an increase with a fixed proportion of a total population for each unit of time. It involves a constant ratio of change. For example, if a species has non-overlapping populations, say annual, annual plants and each organism produce B offsprings, then population number A in generations t equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 is a given by y t is equal to a into b to the power t. In this case, the growth rate is, is a constant. It is defined by b minus 1 into 100. Next slide. Now, this model also is known as a log linear model and the differential equation referred to 1 over y into dy is equal to dx is equal to beta. Okay. Uh, this is a very simple model, it is a log linear model. For most of the data, this model fits very well. The next slide. Now, there is a well known model called a logistic model. This model is a very useful to explain a S shape curve. Log linear is not generally depicts the S, S shape curve. Suppose, the growth rate is a proportional to the produce of the present size and the future amount of a growth and with alpha as the limiting growth value, then we have for k greater than 0 d y by d t is equal to k y into alpha minus y over alpha. Alpha is a greater than 0. This model is called as a logistic model. It is a very useful model to explain the growth of a literature, particularly in social sciences. Then we have another model called a Gomfors model. It is known as dy by dt is equal to ky into log of alpha by over. Gomfors model is defined as y is equal to alpha into e to the power of minus beta into e to the power of minus k t. The curve is S shaped one like logistic. However, it is not symmetrical about its point of inflection. Gomfors curve implies a linear relation between the relative growth rate and the log of y, relative growth rate and the time. This is the important features of the Gomfors model. Uh, Gomfors curve describes a trend in which the growth increment of the logarithms are declining by a constant percentage. Thus, the natural value of the trend would show 
a declining ratio of increment, but the ratio does not decrease by either a constant amount or a constant percentage. A general equation for the Gompers model is y is equal to a into b to the power of c to the power of t. That is the log y is equal to log of a into log of b into c to the power of t. Well, for a given set of a data, how to identify a suitable model to explain? Many people have classified the growth models and then they have also suggested how to use a different model for a given set of a data. Uh, use an exponential model if the approximate trend when plotted on a semi logarithmic paper is a straight line or if the first difference of the logarithms are constant. Use a logistic model if the first difference resembles a normal frequency curve or if the first difference of reciprocals are changing by a constant percentage or if the approximate trend value the original data when expressed as a percentage of a selected asymptote appear linear on arithmetic probability paper. Use a Gompers model if the first differences resembles a skewed frequency curve or if the first differences of a logarithms are changing at a constant percentage. So, these are the guidelines to select a trend type when we analyze the growth of literature data. Whenever we have a lot of data about the growth of uh, literature, we are interested in studying the growth rate, growth pattern etcetera. There are another concept, the concept called obsolescence of a literature. Now, what is the meaning of obsolescent? Out of date or a longer in use. The process of being obsolete is known as obsolescence. The term was first used by Gross and Gross in 1927, analyzed the references in the journal of chemical literature and observed that number of references falls to one off in 15 years. It is a characteristic of as SNT literature, generally measured in terms of half life. The next slide. Half life is defined as the time during which one half of all the currently active literature published. Time needed to account for one half of all the citations received by a group of publications. Discussed in the context of a diachrono studies, use of particular items through successive observations at a different points in time. Synchronous studies are concerned with the plotting the age distribution of uh, the distribution of the material used at a one point in time is also called a median age of the references at time t. If the growth rates of a literature and contributors that is the growth rates of authors are equal then the obsolescence rate remain constant. Higher the growth rate higher the obsolescence rate, quicker the obsolescence and half life. This is what we have proved in some of our research papers. Now, if I conclude in this model, scientometric techniques have evolved over time and are continuing to do so. The counting of papers with the attribution by country, by institution and by author, the counting of citation to measure the impact of published work on the scientific community. The counting of co-citation that is the number of number the number that two papers are cited together in a single paper etcetera. All of these techniques combine to give more detailed and a more effective measurement. Uh, in this unit as I said earlier, I discussed only the growth of literature and I have explained some different models and finally, I have also suggested how to select a particular model to explain the trend and I have just introduced the concept of obsolescence and there is a strong relation between the growth rate and the obsolescence rate. Thank you very much.